pause for a second and picture this. You are at your favorite cafe and the barista knows you by name. You order your usual cappuccino for 180 rupees and it feels like a small transaction. But for the cafe owner, it's much more than that. Over time, your regular visits can add up to thousands of rupees. So that 180 rupees isn't just about the cost of the drink. It's about the long-term value of your relationship with the cafe. Now, this concept is at the core of customer lifetime value. It's the total revenue or profit a business expect from a single customer over the entire duration of that relationship. So in today's video, I will explain you everything you need to know and here's what we're going to cover. First, we'll have a look at the introduction to CLV, understand what customer lifetime value is, why thinking about a customer's total value over time matters more than single sales. Why CLV matters? We'll see how CLV guides decisions on marketing, pricing, loyalty programs and retention strategies. We'll also look at the CLV formulas. We'll learn the key formulas in retail, subscription. Then we'll look at the real world examples. We'll see how customer lifetime value in action with a cafe, a SaaS tool and a D2C brand to understand profitable decisions. We'll also have a look at the key inputs that affect CLV. Then we'll see difference between historical versus predictive customer lifetime value. We'll also discover practical ways to improve CLV. And then we'll finish with an action plan, a very simple step-by-step -step plan to measure and grow CLV in your business today. Now, before we move on, here's a quick quiz question for you. Which customer is likely more valuable over time? Your options are someone who buys a 50,000 rupees gadget once or someone who spends 1,000 every month for four years or someone who buys rarely but refers five paying friends or someone who buys often but only when there's a heavy discount. Let me know your answers in the comment section below. Also guys, if you want to watch more videos like this, do hit the notification bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such content by Simply Learn. Are you ready to level up your decision-making skills with AI? If you're looking to master the art of AI-powered decision-making and unlock your potential in this booming field, then the I am Cozy Coding's Professional Certificate Program in AI-powered decision-making is just what you need. In this 10-month live online course, you'll gain the skills to strategically apply AI in real-world scenarios, enhancing your decision-making abilities across marketing, finance, operations, and many more. You'll get to learn from esteemed I am Cozy Code faculty, earn executive education alumni status and get the chance to experience a three-day campus immersion. Not only you'll understand how to leverage AI tools like Tableau, Power BI and Weka for data analysis, but also gain practical experience through real-world case studies and projects. So what are you waiting for? Hurry up and enroll now and you can find the course link below. Now, let me explain what customer lifetime value actually is. Now, customer lifetime value value is the estimated total revenue or better yet the total profit potential you can expect from a single customer over the full course of your relationship with them. Now instead of asking how much did we make today, CLV teaches you to ask how much will this customer be worth to us over months or that one question changes your marketing budgets, your discounting decisions, your product roadmap, your support, priorities, your retention playbook and everything. If you have ever wondered how much should we spend to acquire a customer or should we offer a loyalty program or not or is this discount helping or hurting in the long run, then customer lifetime value is the number that answers those. To make things practical, let's step into three different businesses and watch how steer real decisions. Let me give you a story explanation of Meera's Cafe Retail. Meet Meera, who runs a neighborhood cafe. Now, her customer drops by three times a week and spends about 180 rupees each visit. Now, for months, Meera has treated every sale as a small win. But today, she asked a bigger question. Over the full relationship, what is urgent worth to my cafe? Three visits a week, roughly 156 visits a year at 180 rupees per visit. That's around 28,080 rupees per year. Now, if urgent stays loyal for three years, that's about 84,000 rupees in revenue from one person. 
and suddenly Mira's marketing feels different. A small local ad or a free muffin to keep Arjun happy doesn't look like a cost. It looks like a smart investment in a 84,000 rupees relationship. Now let's look at the second story example which is current tool subscription business. Now current runs a SaaS tool that charges 1200 rupees every month for a subscription. His question is very simple. How much can I spend to get a new customer and still make a profit? Let me break it down for you. First we look at gross margin. Now current's business keeps 80% of the money it makes after covering cost. So for every 1200 rupees a customer pays, current keeps 960 rupees as profit. Then we look at the churn rate. So here this is how many customers leave the services every month. Its churn rate is 3%, meaning 3% of its customers leave every month. To calculate how long a customer stays, we use the formula 1 plus churn rate. So if the churn rate is 3%, the customer stays for about 33 months, which is 1 divided by 0.03 equals to 33 months. Next, we look at the lifetime value. Now, we multiply current's monthly profit by how long a customer stays. Here monthly profit is equals to 960 rupees which is a gross margin the customer lifespan is around 33 months so the total lifetime value is 960 rupees into 33 which is around 32000 rupees this means over 33 months current can expect to earn 32000 rupees in profit from each customer Next up we look at customer cost CAC. Now current spends 9000 rupees to acquire each new customer. The key is knowing when the customer will start paying back that investment. So here comes the term payback period. Current can recover his 9000 rupees in just under a year because his customer will bring in 960 rupees per month in profit. That's a good sign. Next we'll see the LTV CAC ratio which is the lifetime value customer acquisition cost ratio this is a key metric now current LTV which is 32000 rupees is divided by the CAC which is around 9000 rupees gives him a ratio of about 3 is to 5 is to 1 this means for every 1 rupees he spends to acquire a customer he gets around 3.50 back in profit well above the recommended 3 is to 1 ratio Now with current knows he can confidently invest in growing his customers base. Finally we have Sana who runs a D2C skincare brand. Her customers don't subscribe, they reorder when they need to. Purchases are irregular and some customers go quiet for month. Now instead of averaging everyone together which hides reality, Sana uses predictive CLV to forecast how many more orders each customer is likely to place and at what average value. That lets her segment smartly nurture likely long-term loyalties with education and bundles while reactivating at risk customers with tailored prompts rather than blanket discounts. Let's move on and understand each formula in more detail before starting the calculation. So here we have how do we calculate the customer lifetime value calculation well in a simple way to calculate CLV we've got three key factors the first one over here is basic retail CLV formula next two I'll show you later so what happens in basic retail CLV formula here CLV is equals to average order value into purchase frequency multiplied by customer's lifespan I know you might be confused now that what each term actually means. Don't worry, I'll explain you each term step by step. First up, we've got average order value. Now, this is the average amount a customer spends each time when they make a purchase. Let's say for example, if a customer spends 500 rupees per visit, the average order value is 500 rupees. Next, we've got purchase frequency, that is how often the customer buys from you over a year. Example if a customer buys twice a month the frequency is 24 purchases per year that is 12 months into two purchases then we've got customer lifespan that is how long the customer stays with your business for example if a customer stays for 3 years the lifespan is 3 years and if a customer spends 500 rupees per visit buys twice a month and stays for 3 years then the clv formula is 500 into 24 into 3 which is around 36000 rupees in revenue over the next 3 years 
At number two, we've got margin adjusted CLV, which is the profit based CLV. Let's make the CLV more accurate by considering gross margin. Revenue and profit are different. Gross margin tells us how much profit is after covering the cost of delivering the product. So gross margin is the percentage of sales that is profit after subtracting the cost of goods sold. Let's say for example, if your gross margin is 60%, it means for every 100 rupees spent in sales, 60 rupees is the profit. Now, adjust the CLV to reflect profit profit using the formula margin adjusted CLV is equals to CLV into gross margin percentage. For example, if your CLV is 36,000 rupees and your gross margin is 60%, the margin adjusted CLV is 36,000 rupees into 0 0.60, which is around 21,600 rupees. And this is the profit you expect from that customer over three years. Now talking about why margin adjusted is important. While the basic CLV gives you an idea of how much revenue the customer will bring, the margin adjusted CLV will give you the actual profit. So instead of just looking at sales, which is the revenue, you should focus on profit to understand the real value of the customer. Next up, we've got SaaS model, that is the subscription CLV. In subscription businesses, the formula changes a little. Here's how. At first, you have got customer lifetime value. Now here the formula is average revenue per user, which is the ARPU into gross margin percentage divided by the churn rate. Now here the ARPU stands for average revenue per user, the average amount a customer pays monthly. For example, if a customer pays 1200 rupees per month for a service, the ARPU is 1200 rupees. Churn rate is the percentage of customers who leave each month. So again, 3% of customers leave each month. For example, if the ARPU is 1200, gross margin is 80%, churn rate is 3%, then we calculate LTV as 1200 rupees into 0.80 divided by 0 0.03 which is around 32,000 rupees. This means the CLV for customer is 32,000 rupees considering profit and the churn rate. Next we'll see the key inputs that affect CLV. Here's how you can improve your CLV. The first one on the list is AOV which is average order value. You can increase average order value by offering bundles or premium versions. Let's say for example, cappuccino plus croissant or basic plan upgraded to pro plan. Then you've got purchase frequency. You can encourage more frequent purchases through habit loops, reminders or subscription. At number three, we have customer lifespan retention. Retaining customers longer increases your customer lifetime value, even reducing churn rate from 4% to 3% monthly, and it can significantly increase the customer's lifetime. Gross margin. Always focus on profit margin rather than just revenue to get an accurate picture of CLV. So in summary, basic customer lifetime value is average order value into purchase frequency into customer lifespan and this is the revenue CLV. Now by understanding CLV and margin adjusted CLV, you can make smarter decisions about customer acquisition, retention strategies and marketing budgets. The key takeaway is that while revenue is important, profit via gross margin is what truly drives your business growth. Let's look at the important point now, which is the historical customer lifetime value versus predictive. So in historical customer lifetime value, you need to pass spend over a set of period. Whereas in the case of predictive customer lifetime value, it can forecast future spend and frequency. Now, historical customer lifetime value works best for stable and repeat behavior. Whereas in the case of predictive, it fits irregular or seasonal purchases. Now, historical CLV is very simple and quick to compute, whereas predictive learns patterns to predict value. Now, historical CLV is limited for CAC planning, whereas predictive guides CAC, payback and growth strategy as well. Now that we have understood the difference between historical versus predictive, let's move on and understand how to actually raise your CLV. Nail the first impression. Onboarding and first use success matters the most. The faster customers see real value, the longer they stick around. 
Next up, we've got turn value into habit. Make repeat purchases effortless, subscription for essentials, smart reminders tied to real usage or complete the set bundles that feel like a favor, not a push. Third one is guiding the journey. The cafe regular who loves cappuccino, introduce them to a seasonal special. A SaaS team hitting a usage milestone, offer a timely pro upgrade. Skincare buyer shares science-backed tips to build trust between purchases. The next one is spot churn early. Look for red flags, fewer logins, smaller basket, low engagement and act fast with education, support or personalized nudges that solve the root problem. So guys, this is how you can actually raise your customer lifetime value. One more important thing I'm going to say is how you can actually create your CLV action plan. So the first step would be picking up the right model, which is like subscriptions and retails. In subscription, you've got LTV, ARPU rates, gross margin, divided by churn. This is a formula which you follow. In retail and D2C, you've got formulas like CLV, AOV into frequency, into lifespan. Step two is focusing on retention and average order value. Here, retention will improve in onboarding and AOV will offer smart bundles or upsells to raise basket size. The third step is track the right metrics, the churn rate, purchase frequency, AOV and margin review weekly by cohort and channel. Now this is the plan. Now in order to receive success in your customer lifetime value, make sure you follow these steps. And there you have it guys, customer lifetime value in action. By understanding how much each customer is worth over time, you will be able to make smarter decisions in marketing, retention and pricing strategies. Now it's time to start calculating CLV in your own business. Track metrics, implement retention strategies and test ways to increase AOV because when you master CLV, every other growth metric starts to fall in place. Don't forget to subscribe to your YouTube channel for more such tech insights by Simply Learn. Thank you and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To note up and get certified, you can check the description box below.